Brainstorming and pitching ideas is the funnest part of the creative process. We decided to skip the boring part of actually making stuff and just do the fun part. I'm your host, Tom Walma. I'm Aaron Sorrells, the unemployed alcoholic. I'm the Down River Diva, Stephanie Ann. And I'm JD, the smile hustler, the people's champ, baby. <laughs> and this is Creativity Wasted. Right. As we go into this new millennium world we in now, going 2023 and beyond, we understand that we're going to have to intermix, okay? There's going to be a whole lot of things, a whole lot of people we're going to have to interact with, and somehow we're going to have to understand we got to be sensitive to other people's cultures. Some people just don't know how to approach or communicate with other people culturally. So I got an app that we're developing called the Cultural Translator app. Okay, and this will allow you when you're in certain situations, be able to again decipher situations so that you don't, uh, let's say, step on anybody's toes. Okay, right now we have a large influx of the gay community. Okay, so much so that they got uh acronyms now L B G T Q L M N O P, you know what I'm saying? Plus is plus, you feel what I'm saying? We got pronouns and all that, can't keep up with all this. shit. Now with the culture translator, you'll be able to go into any type of social gathering, any type of area, and be able to maneuver through without any damn problems. You know what I'm saying? You'll be able to, this culture translator will be able to detect people who are non-binary. So you will not say some dumb shit like, what's up, sugar booty? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's that? You know what I'm saying? You got to know how to approach this individual. You walk in, turn on your cultural translator, because it already have the sensory motion, the whole night going on. You just turn it on when you walk in. It will definitely give you all your cues through your Bluetooth to let you know how to not say some dumb shit or not do some dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? Because right now, council community is real serious. And if you ain't really got nothing going on, ain't nothing worse than getting canceled before you get out the gate. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so cultural trash is going to get you through the shit. You feel what I'm saying? I mean, a lot of you white people, y'all still don't know how to properly approach black people. You know what I'm saying? Now, with Cultural Translator, you'll know not to say stupid stuff like boy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, what up, though? Improperly. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, like, Cultural Translator is, it's the it's the future. Maybe it's not a translator. Maybe it's just, like, autocorrect or auto mute. Although there's some people that would, like, you'd never hear a word that they ever said. <laughs> right. <laughs> What would the non-binary correction for sugar booty be? Yeah, uh, for sure, a correction for uh, for sugar booty. You feel what I'm saying? Non-binary. What's happening, Van y'all? Chocolate and vanilla <laughs> swirl booty. Yeah. What's happening? What's happening, good people? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, just nothing. I, I'm uh, trying to think of the uh, the scenario that uh, sugar booty would be acceptable nowadays. I, I don't know that there is one. Is there? Oh, it's quite a few. Quite a few, yeah. There's quite a few. There's quite a few. There's, um, there's some, understand. some settings. We're getting about like the sad food. housewife market that just really needs compliments. Absolutely, gotcha. okay. absolutely, <laughs> right there. You feel what I'm saying? And then you also got to remember when you are non-binary, it's all about what you are representing that day. That particular Thursday, you could be sugar boo. <laughs> now, does it take you your identity into account, like as a older white male, cis white male? Absolutely, that's how. That's how you will program your cultural translator to be able to translate specifically for you. You have to put in all of your attributes so it knows that it's translating for a balding, middle-aged white man who reads a lot of books and, you know, sleeps by himself. You know what I'm saying? Do the face scan just like with the iPhone, you know? Yeah, I mean, the cultural translator is gangster. All you got to do is do one face scan. It's going all inside all your, your nooks and crannies and everything. And just put where you're from. Yep. Because they got to take that into account. Because Always. You're from Kentucky and you look like you, Tom. I mean, it's completely different, different culture. Kind of culture. Different you know? type of culture. They're not going to be. They're not going to be saying uh, some uh, appropriate things sometimes. Yeah. You know so, what I'm so with that, like, it sounds like that, like, like gets you out of the situation where you're going to say something dumb. What if you're trying to say something cool? Oh, so you have to talk into it and tell it. Right. Just, give me a white sentence. That's the beauty of the cultural translator. There's all types of settings that will be, again, it's all adjustable. Every camera, especially these new camera phones, you're not just set, play, Jane. You have to go in there, change it to panoramic. You get what I'm saying? 
You got to change right. it to, you know, uh, uh, what is it, vintage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to change so, it so to the like, so Yeah, like, you got to change it. If you, want, if you want to be a cool motherfucker inside of a culture outside of your own, right. you got to set it to cool non-disruptive you get what i'm saying so so let me just (laughs) let me just hypothetically let's just say i'm break it down baby an old old white guy you know i'm an old Old white guy guy. what's the setting that i'm walking into stephanie your black male man delivered the mail an hour later than normal okay so i'm gonna approach the mailman and and uh, try to communicate and you're gonna gonna try to say like hey why is it so late Right. But, you're but, gonna so, say but you don't so want to get canceled, and you yeah. damn sure you show don't want to get your ass worked. Right. So instantly, like what comes to mind, like how I approach that and how I address the situation uh, as a, as an old white guy, I, I think I step up and like extend a hand of friendship and say thank you very much for delivering the mail. So how would that translate? How do you have to say it? I'm not black, so <laughs> yeah, you no, said so. so it all depends. Like, okay, how do you want to say? Yeah. Do you want to say it corporately? Do you want to say it um, authoritative or do you want to sound cool? See, that's the setting. All right. All right. So I want to sound cool. Do you want to sound, you know, say you could be cool and authoritative. You could be cool, aggressive, cool, passive aggressive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I can believe that's these are a lot of knobs, but let's, let's. Yeah, it's a lot of knobs. Cool, cool, authoritative. A cool, authoritative. So you would speak into the cultural translator what you want to say, which is okay. When uh, you speak into it, you just I'm, sort of I'm, I, I, I'm lean to the side and that my mail was speak like, into it, right? Because here's what you would do in your situation, especially for how beautiful our uh, our apparatus works. You would speak what you want to say to this person, right, into the apparatus before the person arrives. Okay? Oh, okay. All right. Set the settings. Okay. Boom. You say. Why was my mail late? Okay. What seems to be the problem? Boom, okay. coach translator. You say you want cool, authoritative. Yeah, yeah. He gets there. You hit the. You hit it. Boom. Hey man, what's going on with the mail? You to you on time? Is something going <laughs> on with you today? You know, you need a hug or something? <laughs> All right. And then does it translate the other way too? Like uh, absolutely. Okay. He will speak. Right. You did record. Boom. Translate. Because, of course, he's going to say, oh, my bad. Okay. You're right. I was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I was bullshit. I got you. Right. Don't worry about it. Never happen again. Boom. All right. And that uh, translates, and it translates to, to me. And all I am so I... sorry, sir. <laughs> my sincere apologies. I guarantee you that this will never occur ever again. Ever again. And you have a wonderful day. All right. No, no worries. Let bygones be bygones. We're all I good. Think it, I think it's Boom. Be great Coach Trash that come back. Hey, we all good, baby. See you tomorrow. <laughs> all right. All right. Older racist granddaddy. What is what is he saying to the cultural translator? So <laughs> if we got the old racist granddaddy, like, why you can't why you can't never be on time with shit? Cultural translator. Oh, this motherfucker was bullshit. <laughs> he need his ass. <laughs> How about this? You want to express in in that situation the most anger that you possibly can without going over the line. Okay. Then what would you say? Without yeah. saying the N word. Would you say without saying the N word? Yeah. Well, obviously, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, what are you trying to communicate with the most anger without going over the line? What are you saying? Same thing. Just angry about the mail. Okay, you ain't about the mail? Okay. So, Coach Trans like, hey, man, you owe some bullshit. <laughs> I had some shit. I had a check in that mail, and you bullshit, and I ain't going to make it to the bank on time. Cut that shit the fuck out. <laughs> you calling your supervisor. Don't let me have to call your supervisor. Like, yeah, don't let me have to call your supervisor. I know. <laughs> you know she's my auntie. <laughs> <laughs> So, JD, have you ever been in a spot where you uh, wanted or needed a cultural translator? Um, now in this new world order, yes, <laughs> absolutely. I've been caught in a few, quite a few situations where I wish I had a cultural translator to get me out of shit. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh-huh. one was when I was on stage. <laughs> <laughs> what city were you in? Sterling Heights, Michigan. 
<laughs> I was there. <laughs> so Detroit. Yeah, I was performing headlining the show, and I have a whole bit about uh, me being a lesbian and uh, happy to be a part of my sisterhood. And so the two ladies that happened to be sitting directly in front of me at the table by themselves, they had a massive amount of food as though there was a buffet right at their table with also <laughs> a bunch of empty cocktail drinks. When the drinks I know on the average cost between what, seven to 10 bucks? The place is fancy. Okay, it's fancy pants, <laughs> okay? So with all of that disposable income collectively, <laughs> you know, gathered together at one table. No children. I automatically assume that these women have to be lesbians, especially since they both look very athletic. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they look like they can start for anybody athletically. So I'm like, yeah, by far, they've got to be lesbians. So when I made the bit, got to the bit about, you know, me being a lesbian, my sisters, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I always go to the lesbians for the cosign. And I went to them. I was like, y'all know what I'm talking about. They was like, no, we don't. No, uh -huh. the whole crowd, not just me, <laughs> the whole crowd was like, what? Because <laughs> everybody had added up the same things I added up. Yeah. Mm. It was like, there's no way they're not lesbians. So and the cultural translator would have picked up on that. Oh, definitely. Cultural translator would have got me all the way to guess why it would have never let me go down that road. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, Coach yeah. Trash, they would definitely be abort. Abort. Divert attention. Um, could you do it live too? Like text, like how do you say hello to this person? Like in text and then it'll tell you what to say in text. So you don't have to of like course. it goes across all social media. Yeah. It will it won't stop you from all forms of communication will be covered by social media. Yeah. Instagram, all, yeah. Automatically. Mm -hmm. These features are, are complete. We're not trying to whole thing with culture translators. We're trying to bridge the gap amongst cultures so that we can communicate better as a people. This here is for the planet, baby. This is better than we were. We try to change <laughs> we the <were>. world. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to raise the level of consciousness out here in the, in the world, man. <laughs> it's not just a thingamabobber. You know what I'm saying? It's not just the new walk, man. This is the new way of life. We blend the culture before you know it. Culture translator will be able to get you into new galaxies, new dimensions. We covered it all, man. Man, get this guy some venture capital. He's he's ready. <laughs> A unicorn. Test it out with hospitals and police force. First. First. We think it can save a lot of people. Too. And kindergarten teachers. And kindergarten teachers. <laughs> I've always been too chicken to play like a, a black club. Oh, man. And why would that be? I'm just so timid, you know, on so stage. And I... Of course. No. I... You <laughs> never. Maybe, can I put my <laughs> act in and say, like, these jokes will work, these jokes won't work? Sure, hey, man, but Tyler, all I can I had, tell you is I, I, funny ears will funny One of the, my best experiences in comedy was playing the Ambrosia Theater. I was the only white person in the room. There's no audience that laughs like like an all black audience. I mean, they'll tear you apart if you don't bring it. You have to <laughs> have fun with it. You'll never experience anything yeah. like it. I cut my teeth in those rooms. I think I'm, it made me a better comic because of it. Yeah. Because I can pretty much play any room now. I came out on stage and I, <laughs> I heard somebody say, ooh, they got a white boy coming up on stage. <laughs> <laughs> what it did is it created tension with comedy. You build up tension and then you release it with a laugh. And the more tension there is, the better that laugh is. When I hit that first laugh and they were like, all right, he's funny. It released all that tension in the room. And it was it was great. In any room, people will sniff out insecurity or, or yeah. weakness. But you can't uh, have any fear. Yeah, that's my problem. I'm a ball of fear. <laughs> well, hey man, you gotta turn that into your weapon then. You gotta like address the elephant in the room with that thing. It's like being on stage, you can't shy away from nothing. And like he said, what you try to stay away from is what they key in on. So the more yeah. you try to stay away from it, it becomes a distraction. As comedians, that's our number one weapon is to be able to address the elephant in the room. And sometimes the most creative way, which is just being flat out just honest about what the fuck everybody see. If you drool on yourself like, yeah, I'm juicy mounted up here. You feel know what I'm saying? I just got to fight me some booties in the back. You know what I'm saying? You know, and I'm going back to that as soon as I get done. You know, you got to just make it fun up there, man. That's what it is. You look like a nerd, bro. That's what it is. It's cool. Nerds are hot now. They getting their dick sucked. They making big money. They driving fancy cars. 
Everybody's fucking with nerves now. <laughs> this has been a production of Planet Amp Podcast, powered by Pinecast.